Who are ISIS-K? The name ISIS-K is a sub-branch of the more well-known ISIS, that standing for the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. The K part of the name denotes it as a slightly different organization from Khorasan, this being an old Persian word for province that was found in parts of Turkmenistan, eastern Iran and northern Afghanistan, although it's used in Islamist circles to denote a far larger area, perhaps stretching all the way to India. The group was founded in 2015 as a splinter from the more famous group in Iraq and Syria and the Levant, and it was founded by Hafiz Said Khan and Abdul Rauf Aliza when they visited the Islamic State in Syria in late 2014, both of them being former members of the Taliban who had become disaffected with the group. With a core of 60 to 70 fighters from the Levant, they sought to create new groups in both Pakistan's border region and Afghanistan, largely recruiting the disillusioned members of the Taliban into this new organization. And it's been found that there were members stretching from Pakistan through to Turkey and India, as well as some of the neighboring countries and even as far away as Malaysia and the Philippines. They also had some success in recruiting university and middle class people in Afghanistan, something that the Taliban traditionally has not. The group soon came into conflict with the Taliban, who were a much more powerful Islamist presence in Afghanistan, and for a long time they were fighting against both the Taliban, the traditional insurgents in Afghanistan, and the Afghan National Army and its NATO allies, who of course were also fighting the Taliban at the same time. While they shared much of the same worldview, the Islamic State want to create a caliphate that was ruled by Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and they proclaimed their loyalty to him, whereas the Taliban wanted to create an emirate in Afghanistan and so were essentially more nationalistic whilst being Islamist, whereas the caliphate was a much more global idea, as well as of course coming down to a much larger divide between the Islamic State and their ideology and that of al-Qaeda, a much older group to which the Taliban is also largely loyal and allied. These more ideological differences came on top of the fact that they were both aiming to recruit from the same sort of rural traditional Islamic population which they needed to fight their guerrilla wars against their respective enemies. The Islamic State in Khorasan had an early boost when in 2015 they were joined by the IMU, which is the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, which confusingly is an Uzbek movement that's active within Afghanistan, which also declared its loyalty to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi in Iraq. In 2016, however, the United States drone strikes proved to be a really big problem for Islamic State in Khorasan, largely active in Afghanistan, as did the Taliban's offensives against the group, which saw them pushed back. By 2017, it's estimated that around three to four of their leaders had been killed during American drone strikes and that the group now only numbered around 1,000 men, whereas two years prior, they had numbered around 2,500. They managed to establish footholds in two main areas in Afghanistan, in the north along the border with Uzbekistan and Jaozhan, and further in the east of the country along the border with Pakistan in Nagarhar. Now, in 2018, the Taliban launched a huge offensive against the northern province of Chaozhan, which had largely fallen to ISIS-K, bringing a few thousand soldiers from various parts of the country, including the strongholds of the Taliban in the south and Helmand, to dislodge the several hundred ISIS-K fighters that were in the area. Following the disastrous Battle of Darzab, in which the ISIS-K militants were soundly beaten, they actually struck a deal with the Afghan government, which allowed them to be taken out and surrendered to the government in exchange for them not being delivered to the Taliban, who would kill them. The failure of the Islamic State of Khorasan to really take much ground in Afghanistan led to them changing their tactics, and from 2018 onwards they launched several, often suicide, bombing attacks in various centers, particularly in Kabul, the capital, targeting both Western institutions as well as at Eid al-Fitr, normal Sunni mosques, but especially also in areas that were Shia areas, and one of their most heinous attacks was against a school which killed several hundred people, most of them being young schoolgirls, in a Shia neighborhood. In 2021, with the lightning offensive of the Taliban, which I've covered in this video, several hundred or potentially even up to a thousand ISIS-K fighters that had been imprisoned were released by the Taliban or managed to escape during the chaos and reinforce their groups. And it's likely thanks to these that 
we've now recently seen ISIS-K in the news again as they successfully detonated two suicide vests in Kabul airport during the NATO evacuation which killed 182 people including 13 US servicemen. This was followed the next day on the 27th of August by a US drone strike which claimed to have killed several ISK militants as well as some innocent civilians. And it seems now that despite the fact that many hoped the Taliban would bring order to Afghanistan with the ending of the war, if ISIS-K go on as they have in the past, it seems that they may take the place of the Taliban as the insurgents and the Taliban will have a guerrilla war to fight on their hands.